Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing today? I'm talking more to those right now who are watching on repeat because nobody's in the audience right now, but they'll be coming. There is uh, Isabella. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Friday Devo with Pastor Kevin. I'm drinking my second cup of coffee right now. I like two cups of coffee before noon. How about you? Do you drink coffee? And if you drink coffee, when do you drink coffee? Anybody? Isabella, I don't know why I have you pegged for more of a tea person. Am I, am I off? Am I wrong? We will get started in a few minutes <clears throat> around noon, <clears throat> real close to noon. I am here in uh, Claremont, Florida. It's pretty. Cold front came through last night, bringing the temperature down to about 80 today. Yeah. Cold front. How's the weather in Virginia today? Nice, pretty spring day. Somebody talk to me. How is the weather in Virginia today? Is it a nice, pretty spring, spring day? Are the flowers blooming? I like when the flowers bloom. Is it windy? Is it a windy day? Is it a pretty day? We'll get started in just a few moments. Um, if you want to grab your Bible, please go ahead and do so. You can get uh, go to Luke chapter 24. And we've been there all week long this week in Luke 24. Luke 24. So go ahead and grab your Bible so you can read along with me. I'll adjust my hat so that you can see my Phillies logo. Wish I was watching a Phillies game tonight, but I won't be. Unless I go back and watch the 2008 World Series on my Blu-ray. Might be a DVD, I don't know. Waiting for um, audience to build up here, just a couple more minutes. I was asking how the weather was in Virginia. Nobody's giving me an answer, so I guess I just have to guess how the weather is in Virginia. I'm going to guess it is a beautiful day. A little windy. We're going to get started in a few moments. How's everybody doing today? If you have taken a shower today, give me a heart. Put, hit, hit the little heart button there. Everybody who's taken a shower, give me a little heart button there. Let's see, we'll play a little game here, see how uh, COVID clean you are. Have you, is, is anybody um, wearing like real pants today, like, like jeans or slacks, like that kind of a thing? Anybody wearing like, not just, you're not in your, 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 your pajamas, you're not in sweatpants, um, you're what you actually put, you put on something that, that needs a belt. Anybody out there put on something that needs a belt today? Uh, that would be impressive. Let's see, what else, what else? Um, how, oh, it's cold and windy. Oh, it's cold and windy. Hi, babe, I just saw you walk by my, my window. Cold and windy. We're gonna start it here in just a couple more minutes. How many of you uh, have put makeup on today? Any of the ladies out there, you've actually put makeup on today. Anybody out there that's actually put on makeup? Anybody? Any ladies out there put makeup on yet? I know, you're saying why, why would I do that? Anybody go for a walk today? Anybody go for a nice walk and enjoy some of that cold, windy weather? Good morning, um, for another couple minutes. We're gonna get started here in Luke 24 in just a couple moments. If you have your Bible, uh, please grab it. We're gonna go to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Lauren, I haven't even gotten my contacts in yet. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, Grace, look at you. I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm thinking about you guys lately. I hope you are well. You're at work. How many people are actually in an office environment right now or, or on a construction site or something like that? We're going to get started in just a couple moments. We're going to be in Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We say we're going to start at noon, so we're going we're gonna to shoot to... Be as close to noon as we can. You have 30 seconds if you want to go grab yourself a bottle of water. You're a nurse on break. Well, thank you for all you do. Can we give a shout out, raise our cups 
to Grace Ann, who is a nurse. Thank you for everything. We appreciate you, Grace Ann. All right, 10 more seconds, and then we're going to get started. If you have your Bibles, please go to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. It's been a great week of... Um, it's, it's great to hear some of um, our pastors that don't always uh, we don't always hear a lot from. We heard from Pastor Gary this week. We heard from Pastor Bernice this week. And it's just been really neat hearing from them. Um, and I don't know about you, I love hearing all the different voices and, and different thoughts. And uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, this week, as uh, we have heard, uh, there were two disciples on their way to um, Emmaus which was a village, Emmaus, I'm sorry, which was a village to the west of Jerusalem. And Jesus, this is after he died and resurrected, walked up to them, but did not make himself known. They spoke to Jesus as if he was a stranger. And they told him all about, guess who? Jesus. They had no idea it was actually him. And so they were telling him what was going on. When they arrived at Emmaus, they asked this man, who of course we know is Jesus, but they don't know that, to stay the night, and Jesus obliged. At dinner, at dinner, he revealed who he really was. Remember, he took that piece of bread and he broke it and then disappeared. These two disciples went all the way back to Jerusalem. They just went seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and now they're going seven miles back to Jerusalem to meet with the eleven disciples and those who are with them to tell them what happened. What a crazy story. What's going on here? So if you have your Bible, we're going to read Luke chapter 24. We'll be in verse 35. Luke 24, 35. If you have Jesus' words in red, um, you may find some red letters in what we're about to read. Here we go. Luke 24, 35 through 43. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. Verse 38, he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he heard this, he showed them his feet. I'm sorry, when he said this, he showed them his feet and his hands. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? Again, Jesus thinking about food. They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Let's pray. God, I pray that you would be with me as I bring um, your word here uh, into, um, into thought, God, and let it challenge us in Jesus' name. Um, we pray, Lord Jesus, that um, you would speak to each and every single one of us in a very special way as we finish up this road to Emmaus and back. Lord, reveal your resurrected self to us today. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Now, can you imagine how fast they would have made it back to Emmaus? Have you ever had great news to sell, to sell someone? Great news to share with someone. Like something happened that was so big, that was so amazing, you couldn't wait to pick up your phone, uh, to text, to call, to go over to their house, whatever it is. This is great news, and it's great. You know, there's the old expression, you know, don't shoot the messenger. Well, sometimes the messenger actually brings incredible, great news. And when you're the messenger and you're in that position to bring great news, um, it's a great place to be in and you can't wait to share it with someone. Um, when I think about the gospel and, and, and what's been entrusted to us, the story of Jesus, what he's done in our lives, to me, that's great news. We should have this attitude, right, as we're, we're, we're talking with people and meeting with people. Man, you, gotta, you can't believe what just happened in my life, what I just saw, what I just witnessed. And that's what happened with these uh, particular disciples here. And it says, then the two told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread once they were all together, these two disciples, they started telling the story of what just happened. And I find it fascinating that the last time we saw Jesus break bread, he was saying what was going to happen to his physical body. 
And this time, when he breaks bread, his glorified body disappears. Disappears. Verse 36. While they were still talking about this, okay, so they're, they're in the room now. Okay, these two disciples who spent some time with Jesus, they came back to testify all about Jesus. They're telling them what happened. They're telling these 11 disciples and all the others that are gathered, you're not going to believe what happened. This is incredible. And they're telling them the news. He's, we saw him. We spent time with him. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, peace be with you. And in the same way, the previous evening, Jesus disappeared. He reappears. They're all together. They're telling the story. You're not going to believe it. It's Jesus. We saw him. We, we spent time with him. And as they're all gathered and all these people are together, boom, Jesus just shows up in the room, which is pretty stinking amazing. Have you ever watched those um, videos of street performers, street magicians, um, where they're doing some kind of magic trick on the street, some kind of illusion, something on the street, and, and, and all of a sudden a crowd starts to form? You know, um, my favorite part of those uh, is usually not just the trick. My favorite part of those is the crowd's reaction. When some magician does something where he takes somebody's pen and he breaks it and next thing you know, he, 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 the pen reappears completely working fine and functional in someone's pocket. You know, and the whole crowd's like, whoa, I can't believe what I just saw. I can't believe what I just witnessed. Um, I imagine, again, my mind is very, you know, um, visual like that. And I, and I think about what the room must have been like. How did the crowd receive Jesus when he just Whoa! When we hear about it in Scripture, we're going to uh, continue reading a little bit further. Um, how they must have reacted. Did they yell? Did they laugh? Did they smile? They're in complete shock. I mean, think about this. And when Jesus sees all this, he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you is a, it's a greeting of comfort. He recognized that they were fearful in that room. They were terrified. They were, they, were, they were caught off guard. They couldn't believe what they were seeing and what they were witnessing. And so verse 37 and 38 says this, when they were, I'm sorry, they were startled and frightened thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? At this point, they think that Jesus is a spirit or a ghost that's in the room with them. And I can't blame them for thinking this way. I mean, how would you have reacted? I mean, honestly, how would you have reacted? You're there with all your church friends, all your people, all those that have been following Jesus, and all of a sudden he just appears in the room and there he is with his glorified body. In verse 38, I think, um, personally, I detect a, a hint of frustration from Jesus. Now, I could be wrong, but as a leader um, who's led people, you know, dozens, hundreds of people through the years, when you kind of have a similar message that you're saying over and over again, and man, this is what it's all about, and that's what Jesus had been doing with the disciples, and years into it, your people still don't get it, it's so frustrating. It's like, why? How, do, how have you not gotten this yet? But this is what I've been talking about for years. And I'm sure Jesus, when he showed up, and, 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 and he's like, hey, here I am. And, 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 and when they saw his glorified body, and, they, and they, well, we, this is a ghost, this is a spirit. You know, I, I love Jesus. He says to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your mind? I, in other words, I've been telling you this was going to happen. I've been saying that I'm going to die and I'm going to rise again. I've been telling you this. You should know this. And I think my thought would have been something like, you know, I probably would have said something like, you know, Jesus, uh, you died and I saw it. Uh, with my own eyes. I saw you die, and now you just pop into the room, you know, like you're the genie from Aladdin. Like, that you're catching me off guard here. Like, I don't get this. This is, this is something I didn't expect. That, that, that may have been an answer that I might have given. Who knows what, you know, the disciples might have been saying. But instead of becoming even more frustrated, Jesus does what he does. He did what he does, I should say. He showed grace. He showed grace. Verse 39, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. These are in red letters if you're reading along with me. This is Jesus. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Now understand this. A resurrected body has a physical element. And you can read more about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It talks about it there. Um, there's an old Christian riddle. Maybe you've heard it. It goes something like this. What is the only man-made thing in heaven? 
What is the only man-made thing in heaven? I'll pause. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. And if anybody knows the answer, please feel free to drop it in, in the chat there. What is the only man-made thing in heaven? It's an old Christian riddle. You might have heard it in Sunday school if you grew up in Sunday school. Okay? The only man-made thing in heaven, the old Christian riddle, the answer to that is, it's simply the scars on Jesus' hands and feet. It's those wounds that mankind did to him. So Jesus invites those gathered to look at his hands and his feet. Um, again, when I, when, I, when I read this, I'm reminded, you know, of, <laughs> you know, that one kid in high school who says, yeah, well, one time, man, I was attacked by a bear or a shark or, you know, some kind of crazy story, you know, and you're like, what are you talking about? No way, you weren't attacked by a shark, you know? He says, no, dude, I'll prove it. And he pulls his pant leg up and there's like this gnarly, like, scar on his, on his leg, you know? And I was like, whoa, dude, look at that scar. That's crazy. That's gnarly. Um... I think about that, you know, like prove it, like prove it, show me, show me the scar, you know? And I think that's kind of what Jesus did here. He says, no, 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 look. And I picture him pulling back, you know, some kind of fabric or material and he just says, look at my, look at my nail scarred hands here. Look at that. Look at my feet. Take a look. Verse 41 through 43. And while they still did not believe it because of, Joy and amazement. This is a very important verse here. Pick that up. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, and I love this, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. It says they were struggling to believe the fact that Jesus' resurrected body was standing. Like, this was Jesus. He just popped into the room, and here he is. They said they were having problems believing that it's him. Because why? Because of joy and amazement. Have you ever had something horrible happen to you, only to find out later that it was all fixed? Um, probably my all-time favorite Tom Hanks movie. Probably. Probably. Maybe not. Definitely top three. Tom, Tom Hanks movie. There's a movie that came out, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s, called Big. Tom Hanks uh, is played by a, a young boy, and he goes to one of these machines at a fair, and he wishes, they, they, they said, the machine says, I'll, I'll you know, create wishes, I'll grant wishes, and he says, I want to be older, I want to be big. And boom, he wakes up the next day, and he's Tom Hanks. He's, he went from a 12-year-old to being Tom Hanks. So a whole movie's about Tom Hanks going to New York City, blah, blah, blah. Well, this goes on for months, and every now and again it would show the mother of Tom Hanks, the 12 year old, and she was upset, she was crying, she can't believe it, she thinks her son is kidnapped, what happened to him, what happened to my son? And at the very end of the movie, um, you know, Tom Hanks decided, no, I wanna be, I wanna be a 12 year old again. And he goes back and he goes up to the door and he knocks, and his mom answers, and I'll never forget the way the mother reacted when she saw Tom Hanks as a boy. When she saw her son. Can you imagine? It went for months and months not seeing her son. And all of a sudden, he just walks in the door. Was he kidnapped? Did something happen to him? What happened to him? I don't know what happened to my son. He just disappeared. And then, boom, there he is. And she has this, this reaction of joy and amazement. And I'm sure there was some doubt in that moment. Like, is it really you? I, this is too good to be true. This is incredible. And I think, when I think about this moment where the disciples are, are, are taking this all in, there's this doubt. Is, is it really you? Could it really be you? Is it possible that it's you? I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. I am so stinking excited. I can't believe this. This joy, this amazement. And knowing they were still struggling to grasp all of this, he asked for food. <laughs> when he sat down and ate, it was proof that he was, in fact, not a ghost, but a resurrected body. Those of us 80s kids that grew up on cartoons, we know that ghosts can't eat, right? <laughs> and that's what Jesus was proving here. Jesus is like, just give me, give me something. You got something to eat? And they said, well, we got some broiled fish. Well, give me some broiled fish. And so he eats it, he takes it in, and all of a sudden it was proof that he was, in fact, Jesus, and he had a resurrected body. And I love the fact that Jesus seems to always work food in. Did, did you catch that in this thread of scripture here? He always seems to work food in. Remember all you cool cats and kittens, a meeting without food is an email. <laughs> and Jesus knew that. Jesus knew the food was an important part of fellowship. Um, 
I just want to say thank you so much for enjoying, um, for being with us as we have gone through uh, this section of scripture. What a great week this has been. I loved hearing from all the different pastoral voices this week. It was awesome. Um, next week, we'll be back Monday through Friday at noon, uh, mostly on Facebook. Uh, there will be some times where we're on Instagram as well. You can find that schedule posted weekly. Um, don't miss it. This weekend we have church. I know it's a little different, but man, we've got a new series starting. I'm so excited to hear uh, what Pastor Scott's going to bring this weekend. You do not want to miss this. It's going to be incredible. Church at uh, Saturday at 6 p.m. Uh, and then Sunday morning at uh, 9.30 and 11. Do not miss it. Get your kids together. Get the fam together. Get some coffee. Relax. Sit by the 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 TV, the phone, the whatever it is, your iPad you're watching and watch our service is going to be amazing. What an amazing God we serve, amen. The fact that Jesus died for us, rose again, and man, he's coming back for us. I hope that excites you. I know in the midst of all this craziness that's going on in the world right now, we got all these, you know, we got the virus and the economy and, and, and of course on top of that, there's tornadoes, there's locusts, there's all these things going on in the world, wild, wildfires and hey, listen, in the midst of it, the good news is this. Jesus loves us. He has a plan for us. Amen. He has not forgotten about you. Hey, listen, if you're home alone, you're spending a lot of time by yourself, and man, this is just getting to you. I mean, you just feel it in your head, like you're starting to go a little stir crazy, you're getting that cabin fever, um, starting to be full of anxiety and, and worry and all that. Hey, do me a favor. Please reach out to us. Uh, send us an email. Um, reach out through, through Facebook. Do what you got to do. Get a hold of us. Um, we're here for you. You know, I, I'll call you. I'll drop everything and, and call you if I need to. We're here for you. Um, you know, if you're in a situation, um, we, we know I was talking to um, some friends of mine and, and, and you know, and that work in the law, and they said domestic abuse is going through the roof right now. And, and, and we knew it was going to happen, unfortunately. If you're in a situation where you're, you're in an abusive situation, can you please reach out to us? Uh, we want to do all that we can to help you through this. We love you so much. We're here for you. I know that we can't be physically together, but we're here for you. We love you so much. We missed gathering together. And listen, it's going to happen. We're going to get back together. and It's going to be incredible. But for now, let's gather with our families around the TVs this weekend. I love you so much, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.